you have experience in embedded system, ROS, and various robot kits, but still feel like you are not clear about this robotics field. Well, my friend, that is absolutely normal. I've actually started my bachelor's as an aerospace engineering, but I fell in love with the drones and the UAV, so I double majored in computer science and then I went to grad school. But still, I sometimes kind of feel like the same. But the difference between now, today me, and then previous me in the past, the main difference is that I at least know what I do not know. What I mean by that, so if you feel like you're kind of lost and uncertain about how to move forward in the robotics project, having a clear roadmap of the discipline uh, can make a huge difference. In other words, you need to look at the forest, not the trees. And in this video, let's discuss about three roadblocks or barriers that might be holding you back in this field of robotics. And if you're new to here, I'm Elliot. I'm a robotics engineer and educator. I help people get into the robotics field as smooth as they can with a clear vision and confidence. So here are the three main roadblocks that I'm talking about. First, Arduino-based robot kits and control engineering and math and coding. So first of all, Arduino-based robot kits. You may think it's kind of counterintuitive and maybe controversial that you have already worked on these Arduino robot kits and that that's bad. No, I'm not saying that's bad. That's actually very good. And I was there. I even tried about five to seven robot kits making Arduino-based robots and then try to control with the joystick. But the problem is that we need to actually move on. And that's because if you want to move on to the professional field, you need to be able to close the loop, the feedback loop of the control, and then actively control the robot states like position and velocity. So if you set uh, velocity as a certain, say, I don't know, X, Y, Z meters per second, the robot got to follow that exactly. So that's the feedback loop I'm talking about. And then what I actually ended up with with this Arduino based robot is that I kind of using the joystick and then playing with a bunch of toys. And then that is certainly not autonomous vehicle. And that requires my brain to move around. So it's not autonomous machine. So that definitely did not meet my expectation as a professional robotics project. That being said, if you are an absolute beginner, working on a couple of robot kits like this wouldn't hurt. However, what's even more important is the second point that I'll cover next. The second point is the control engineering. The control engineering, in my opinion, is the most essential building block in robotics. So one of the most common mistakes I see among people with a professional background, like engineering field, like software engineering, uh, embedded system is that they tend to neglect the control engineering in their robotics project. So the control engineering in a higher level can be broken down into three subcategories. One is literally control, and then second is the state estimation, and the third is optimization or decision making. And I highly do recommend that gaining experiences in all these three subcategories of the control before diving into a robotics project. However, if I say this, I'm pretty sure there must be at least one person go to bookstore or Amazon bookstore and then order a control theory textbook. My good friend, that might suffocate your interest and lead you to burnout. I mean, who knows? I mean, you are smarter than myself. That may work for you. If you exactly know what you're doing, do it. But if you're like me, like somewhere in the average group of people, then um, yeah, that might not work because it didn't work for me because textbooks are more like an encyclopedia, like a list of the information instead of step-by-step um, -step guide or kind of fun stories like Harry Potter. So reading the textbook might be, might be your last choice. And exactly that's why I actually made this course. If you are curious about my robotics 101 course, if you want to smoothly enter into the field of robotics with clarity and confidence, check out this video as well. So what should you do instead? Well, first understand the control block diagram. So a typical control block diagram includes a controller, system dynamics, and state estimator. And start by familiarizing yourself with this structure. Then second, complete the feedback loop. For example, let's say you want to build an autonomous drone. First thing that you want to do is that decide on the type of or shape of the drone. Like it is a quadcopter, it is half sculptor, and so on. And then second, 
build the state estimator. What I mean by that, using the inertia sensors like a gyroscope accelerometer and sensor fusion algorithms like comma filter, make sure your state estimator for like oil arrivals and rotation matrix works first for your drone because your drone anyway need the information about this angular position which is the oiler angles. Next, implement a controller. A good starting point is a PID controller which works for the most of the case. And finally implement the mixer algorithm and this involves the controller. The PID controller says XYZ torque is required then you can actually distribute this torque for each motor. So if it is quadcopter, you distribute the required torque. So by completing this minimal control loop, you will establish a solid foundation because this control loop will be nested and then the rest of them will be simply a repetition. And then the last roadblock may be your math and coding skills. So finally, let's talk about the math and coding. These are the two areas that can never be overemphasized in robotics. If you're already in engineering field, chances are you've already at least encountered the freshman level physics and calculus and sophomore level linear algebra differential equation and statistics. And that's likely all the foundation of math that you need. And from there, the key is to apply those skills to the project and believe it or not, these practice projects don't always have to involve actual robot hardware. So first, maybe start with machine learning project using Gaussian mixtures and something like that. Then work on the common filter project. Why? In a way, robotics is more like a real-time data science because your robot algorithm needs to process the sensor data in real time. So these exercises will help you bridge the gap between the basic math skills and the real-world problems. Now, on to the coding, the language of the machines, and do I really have to emphasize this, guys? Well, I mean, like, the coding skills itself is in a way trivial nowadays because there are ChatGPTs and Cloudy, and they write the code for us, but if you don't understand the code, you cannot even ask a question to the AI. More important thing for the coding part is that you need to understand the pattern or architecture of the software, not just line by line coding. And then what's more important in robotics is that you need to understand what code is doing what, and then what's the result of this code in the actual physical world of your robot's behavior, right? And then uh, it is true that when it comes to robotics project, you may encounter lots of custom PCB boards that you need to design. And then I actually I was also kind of reluctant to learn the PCB, but I actually tried a couple of years ago and then turned out to be as freaking simple. I don't know why I didn't even start earlier. It's really simple and that's all you need to do to overcome all these three barriers of robotics. So I have talked about the three roadblocks in the robotics that may be holding you back, but let's be honest, actually working on all these overcoming barriers and roadblock as your side project doesn't sound that exciting. I, I get it. But take me, uh, for example, I'm an actual true nerd and I used to hate exercising. I knew that daily jogging every day would make me healthier, but I never really tried it, although actually it's not that bad. However, after turning 36 in my life, I realized that my physical body is not the same as my 20s, for sure. So I started running it and then I even feel better and more energetic than uh, I was in 20s. So the point is that if you actually started out, it's actually way better than you might think and then it's maybe easier than you think. But trust me, if you actually start out and then you've gained some confidence and clarity in this field of robotics, you will feel great. You can see what others cannot see and then you can connect all these missing links in your robotics projects. So if you're curious about how to get started in robotics with clarity and confidence, check out my other video about my course, Robotics 101. And if you enjoy this kind of content, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to this channel. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.